hey, look at us. We're back in scrappy hour. And it must be Monday. It must be 5 p.m. Must be time to have a nice drink, chat about wrestling, do our thing. Lily's here. I'm here. Lily, how you doing? I'm actually doing great today. Um, I just got back from the gym. I'm doing some personal training and uh, one of my shoulders is very angry at me right now, but I'm feeling good. Excited to have a little drink. Excited to talk about wrestling. Got to get that personal trainer or that that masseuse or the massage. Do you have a massage gun? Uh, no, um, I actually use um, like a squash ball or like um, what's it? Not a squash ball. It's just like a very hard ball, and I do fascial tissue repair. It's it's brutal. Oh, nice. Um, and I also want to get into uh, acupuncture soon. I've never tried it in my life. Like I've gotten a couple of massages, but um, I really want to try acupuncture. I have a friend, this is a former roommate who got really into like Eastern medicine, Chinese medicine, all that does nice. the, um, the bowls, you know, the, uh, the, the singing. Bowls. Oh, cupping. No, no, not cupping. It's like they're, they're singing bowls where, um, they're like, there's these massive bowls. Someone in the, in the chat's going to tell us or the comments can tell us, uh, and like you play them, they're, they're very relaxing. They're oh, relaxing. it's like a sound bath kind of. It is. Yeah. 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 Okay. So he does that and he, uh. I think he tried to learn a lot about acupuncture, tried to become an acupuncturist, but uh, I don't know what he does anymore. But when I met him, when I, when I lived in the same house as him, he had like short hair. He was very like well to do. And then all of a sudden, this is ridiculous. I'm at home one day. This is years ago. I am sick as a dog having the, a fever dream. I'm in bed. The lights are out and my TV is on. I had a TV above my bed and I was watching and all of a sudden this guy comes on and he's got long hair and he pulls up his name and I'm like, didn't I live with that guy? And I no texted way. one of our other roommates and it was the same guy. And I was like, are you seeing this? And he's like, what channel? Yada, yada, yada. So he picks it up. He's like, yeah, that's the same guy. <laughs> It was the weirdest thing. Good for him, I guess. Dude, if he's making a living, do it however you're gonna do it. As long as he's not as long as he's not scamming like poor people, I'm I'm good with it. Exactly. And he's he's <laughs> in Toronto, so if you really want him, at least he was like 10 years ago. Who knows where he nice. is now? But Tunia yeah. massage is amazing too. And and I also love uh float therapy. Um I don't know if you've ever tried it. Is that when you get into the bath, they close the door and you're just kind of like there and in your in your head? Yeah, it's like um, a sensory deprivation tank, essentially. And it's in so much salt water that like you're weightless, kind of like at the Dead Sea or other places in the world. Cool. Um, and it's awesome. And um, it's kind of like a natural way to just deal with whatever is in your subconscious and also just like meditate, chill out. I actually have fallen asleep doing it. So. Oh, I've heard that story before. Not from you. Yeah. I've heard it like from other people who've tried it. That's cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Here we are. It's Grappy Hour. Wrestling. We got we got to talk about wrestling. I mean, listen, who knows? People in the comments might be just like, no, no, keep talking about like acupuncture and cupping and all this ridiculous shit. Like wrestlers cup. They like Kenny Omega. Oh, yeah. Would you come out and have like the cup marks on his back during a match? Just the way it I'm is. I'm actually always looking at um, what types of uh, therapy tape wrestlers use because as I start doing more powerlifting and as I start doing like judo and wrestling now that uh, things are kind of opening – you're going to get hurt. Like when I was boxing, I got hurt. Um, luckily not too bad and luckily not like any head injuries, but um, my back and my shoulders were like cooked. So when, when you're watching wrestling and when people are like, Oh, this is fake. Yes. The stories are fake and predetermined, but it's very real what's happening to these people's yeah. bodies. We saw a lot of bodies getting crashed and burned this weekend, and I think uh, you and I should probably talk about that. And also, maybe, uh, what are you drinking? Let's uh, let's start with that. Well, in honor of mostly GCW in Dallas this week, which was very, very bloody, I am drinking a strawberry beer called Fruly. And I don't know if it's available where you are, but it's really good, actually. Uh, someone at the liquor store recommended it to me, and it's really it's like a it's a fruity beer obviously it's like it's yeah. strawberry it's kind of like I, a juice almost um but it has like a finish of beer oh okay so it's like it's near beer but it's actually alcoholic mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's only uh 4.1 percent so it's oh not it's like a, it's strong. cooler territory oh yeah bud i could picture Dude, some awesome. young some young pot potentially underage people drinking this for sure <laughs> that's right allegedly hey, man, drink responsibly drink responsibly oh yeah get an uber drink responsibly 
That's right. Um, I ended up doing a little bit of mixing. People know that while I'm on stream 99% of the time, if I'm not drinking water, I've got a Diet Pepsi in my hand. Uh, and I've also got this little bottle of Glenlivet because guess what? Ooh. Yeah, because because wrestling was all topsy-turvy this weekend for me. I watched some of it. I missed some of it. But also it was like there was so much going on that mm -hmm. like I didn't know what to do. So I mixed the Diet Pepsi with the Glenlivet. And because of GCW, I have my favorite cup which hopefully you can read that. I think you're going to have to put it a little closer. It's going to start going out of focus. So I'm going to manually focus it. There we go. There it is. Wow. What a forever motherfucking mood or mother bleeping <laughs> mood. That is a class I got for my best friend years ago for my birthday. And uh, I use it all the time. <laughs> we could probably have a separate show just about all of the strange glassware that I have because I also got super into tiki cocktails and just cocktail yes. making uh, like near the beginning middle of you know what. Um, mm -hmm. And I just have tons of tiki mugs and very strange vintage glassware now. So I should probably <laughs> open a bar one day. You should. Oh my God. Could you do that? Let's have, we'll have probably, wrestling yeah, matches in a couple bar. years. Yeah, it will be called turnbuckles. Oh, you, someone's going to turf that. Someone's going to take that. You know it. Come can on. you Can you take that? I, I mean, unless you go ahead and, like, you know, copyright it or something. <laughs> Bring it back. All right. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk. What, what you want to talk about? We want to talk about Dynamite? You want to talk about Rampage? You want to talk about yeah. GCW? Where do you want to start? Um, I think let's start with some AE dub and then uh, we nice. can cap it off with some GC dub. And if you even have some things about WWE, because, oh boy, what a interesting time uh you can fill us yeah. in because i'm kind of a casual right but you can we can kind of bounce some ideas off of each other hey if we want right now it's more fun to talk about what happened in, in aw and what happened to gcw this past weekend i'm fine with yes. that so we'll yeah, see yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see where our brains are at towards the end of the show uh let's talk let's talk uh mox and, and wheeler yuda opened up the show uh for dynamite what do you think of that match? That was unexpected because originally it was supposed to be Brian Kendrick and everything came to light about Kendrick's beliefs. And uh, yeah, he was pulled from the show. I think rightfully so. That's my opinion. And they put in Wheeler Yuta to replace him versus Moxley. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it's obviously the right decision to remove someone who <clears throat> is spreading um, just ridiculously stupid conspiracy theories that um offend huge swaths of people including me who's jewish right so yep. um i think that was a right idea um i hope that aew continues to act quickly when things like that happen because they do happen um yep. you know not everyone's always made aware of people's pasts i did i had no idea about that video um it was very like q anon info wars adjacent type Conspiracy garbage that we've all uh, seen before, but more importantly, Wheeler Yuta um, as a replacement, I thought was an interesting choice. I mean, you don't really have every option you probably want, but um, I love Yuta. I think that he's getting a good push now. I think that he's getting more confident in ring, and um, I, I don't think it was a banger of a match, but I think it was fun, and I, I, I think Moxley is now kind of really found his footing again. Um, and he's he's lost a significant amount of weight. So yeah. getting used to that in ring is it's it's interesting, right? Um, even myself when I was boxing and you would be matched up with someone who was significantly larger or smaller than you. Um, it really threw your body for a loop. So it was it was I thought it was a cool match. And I love um, I don't know if he's been doing it forever, but the back scratch gimmick. I love. That. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was really good. That's right. Yeah. I, I enjoyed the match uh, like you did. One thing I really enjoyed was that it felt like you'd have got a lot more out of it than mm -hmm. he normally would, right? And I think it was it became more of a showcase match for him, which makes you think Kendrick probably would have had the same opportunity had he not been pulled. Uh, but because yuda has been with the company longer, he's been appearing and actually like Don he's been dominating on the YouTube shows, which is hilarious mm -hmm. to me. Like if you watch Dark and, and Dark Elevation, you see Yuta actually win matches, but then you go to Dynamite and you go to Rampage and he he doesn't. Um, and it, now it might be time for Yuta to start getting more uh, serious. I use very lightly in quotation because he's always serious, but now they can start pushing him more yeah. seriously. And so. I think that they are starting to push him. And I think that... Yeah. Um, they're kind of testing the waters on the different shows just to kind of see how the crowd acts, how he also works with the crowd as well. And that's one thing I've noticed too is, you know, 
Um, it's no secret that Wheeler Utah is a talented technical wrestler. He has a lot of different styles that he uh, utilizes, but um, his promos and everything else, you know, it, it needs some work. And I have noticed that it's getting better, you know, um, especially with all these promo in between uh, bits backstage yeah. with the best friends, even in ring, even standing ringside. Um, he just seems a lot more passionate. He seems a lot more uh, present in his body and just um, himself. I'm ready to see Yuta break out a character of some sorts. Yeah. And he was, you know, at one point he was up to the mask was cool. WWE. Yeah, exactly. Like little yeah. things like that go far. I just, I need to see more out of a lot of wrestlers in AEW than just whatever, like the, other than, Hey, I'm good at wrestling. And there are a few of those and some of them are young and they're still trying to figure it out. But at the same time, you know, maybe this is just because I'm, I'm so used to the WWE brain. I, mm -hmm. I don't want them to have like, you know, Wheeler Yuta is actually a truck driver or something like that, but I want something that'd be kind of like, cool though. It kind of would be. Could you imagine? Because his name is Wheeler. <laughs> Wheeler I am a truck. truck. He or is he a is a truck. Yeah. <laughs> Optimus Yuta. Um, but I just I'm expecting a little bit more from Yuta soon, especially because after the match, we see Brian Danielson show up, right? And he confronts Mox and he mentions Yuta. And he's talking about putting together a stable with Mox. And he's like, Yuda and Daniel Garcia. And he also, who else? He mentioned someone else. Uh, Lee Moriarty. Lee, Lee Moriarty, yeah. yeah. And of course, everyone's excited for this. Like, I'm sure you're probably looking forward to something Shenanigans, like yeah. Yeah. What do you want to see? Do you want to see Mox and Danielson work together? Do you want to see them at odds? Like, where do you want to see it? Um... I personally, I don't really know or care which way it goes between those two specifically. I think that um, even if they do work together and then some kind of betrayal happens or some kind of double crossing happens, um, some kind of breaking up of other factions happen because of those two, would love to see it. I think that um, their styles together as a tag team as well, we kind of bring a very new Japan style match to yeah. North American audiences that I think not a lot of people, well, no, a lot of people have seen it, but they don't get to see it in North America as much. Right. Um, and just these two dudes essentially turning other dudes into hamburger meat. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I think AEW, um, it actually does have quite a good balance of like the flippier aerial top rope guys and your kind of strong style striker <clears throat> dudes and your luchas. So yep. there's a lot of things that could happen there. Um, breaking up factions, joining factions and uh, 2022, I think for tag belts, especially in AW will be very interesting for singles. I'm kind of like, Meh. but for tag belts, I'm very interested. Yeah, me too. I, I think one thing you said that's really interesting is the uh, the chopping them up like hamburger meat. I think that would make for really funny backstage segments and even just sending them out there and making some of these guys look not like fools, but like you got to learn and you have to learn by facing some of the best and getting beat up and, you know, coming back from adversity type of thing. I think with Yuta, if you have Wheeler Yuta join a group like this, they have to break off from best friends. And there's yeah. a story there with Yuta and Trent kind of at odds why not do a match between Trent and Yuta where it's one of those respect matches where if you win, you're in best friends, have Yuta win on dynamite against Trent. And then they shake each other's hand and Yuta says, nah, forget these guys. I'm out of here. I'm gonna go join Danielson and Mox or, or just Danielson alone. I like, like that. That's giving friend. me big Cobra Kai kind of. Yeah. Energy. Yeah. There you go. I, so, so that's kind of where I'm at with, uh, with Mox and, uh, and Danielson, them leading a stable is cool, but I also want to see them face each other. That's what we're getting at, like eventually, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, I think we're, to your point, going to get both. I don't know in which order. I don't know when. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, AEW always booms you. Like you think that you know what they're going to yes. do and they do it, but just a little bit differently. So it's really, really hard to guess. And I've been trying to make all these predictions about the House of Black and Julia and all this. They're all wrong. Mm -hmm all wrong i all my predictions about like some of the women's division usually come true um and i think that just has to do with um like booking availability travel schedules covid etc yeah. um and it actually was really nice to see a lot more segments not even just matches just segments with women this week on AEW. the pull yes. apart was hilarious when uh, the whole locker room came out like that's what we need to see 
that's what we need to see. Not even just with women, just in general. Like I love stuff like that. So let's talk about that pull apart. Let's talk about Brandy. Let's talk about Dan Lambert. Let me just take a sip of beer because this is while you're spicy, doing that, I feel. I'll set it up. So I'll tell you right now, I've mentioned this elsewhere. When I saw the lower third for Brandy, when they brought up her name and usually like the, the top line says something like uh, chief branding officer or, you know, watch roads to the top on, T on TNT, whatever. It would be something promotional. When it said on an eight match winning streak, I'm like, oh, we're setting up a match with Brandy and somebody. And so she starts talking and all of a sudden Dan Lambert comes out. So I think we have similar but differing opinions with Dan Lambert. And I know we're going to get into it in a second. Uh -oh. I don't like the content that Lambert spews to get his point across. I like Dan Lambert's character. I like what he's doing because I think that the idea is that he's trying to be old man POS who's out of touch with society and with the world that he's in. I don't like him going to, you know, just implying that Brandy is a sex worker or like that she did that as a past job and demeaning it because he makes a reference to on your, in your last job, you, they flipped you over and they had you, whatever, like basically making an allusion to her, you know, having to get, having to fuck for work, plain and simple. Um, I don't like that because we talk about it all the time. Like sex work is legitimate work and maybe I'm thinking a little too much about it, but it doesn't do much for me when that happens. But again, I get, I get the character. I'm behind the character. I'm not behind the content of the character right now. Go ahead. I mean, I, I actually agree with everything. Uh, like you said um, about sex work being real work about the content, you know, maybe, you know, not, being delivered properly but i think that's the point like i think that that's the point and i think that if this was going to air on television that there probably was some type of discussion backstage or prior to it airing between brandy and dan where they discuss what's going to be said um you know one joke was made by um what's his name in the acclaimed a few months ago um about sex assault survivors and rape yep. survivors and it disgusted me like i um was really upset and offended by that personally and you know they essentially put him on the bench for a while and he he probably had to do some sensitivity training on all this and that um and he's bounced back actually quite well from yeah. that and i yeah. think that he did learn his lesson um so as much as i do agree that yeah what he's saying is complete like boomer bullshit I think that it was agreed upon like between Brandy and him to probably say it. So it's kind of part of a work and it's part of a performance. So for that, I kind of love like what a POS he acts like, because in the real world, that is what a lot of men are like to women and especially yeah. to black women. So that's, a really that's another angle. No, that's a really good point because you see it. I see it on socials all the time. I see, I see women of, of all uh, women of all of all kinds pointing out how they are treated um, typically by men and and you're right that is absolutely something that happens in the real world part of wrestling is pulling real world issues into the ring and almost magnifying it by a hundred I, I see what you're saying I think a lot of us getting upset by the content um I think it's a good thing first of all because it's it's clearly drawing the ire of wrestling fans that want it to be better and want them. He doesn't to look good. Not. Like he doesn't look good, right? Yeah, so. exactly. But he, but the, but then you know, is it go away heat? Are we really wanting to see Dan Lambert go away? Are we done with him? I personally like. I see him showing up at Impact, and he showed up at Impact before years ago, and he was great. I didn't know that. Yeah, so he's done stuff with MLW. He's done stuff with Impact Wrestling. I saw him at an Impact pay per view in Ottawa years ago i didn't even like register that it was dan lambert so my point being like lambert's been around wrestling for years mm -hmm. and he's been playing a heel effectively for years and i think this is the first time where the character is so um wrong but also true to life yeah that we're done like we don't like it but do we want like we don't have a problem with dan lambert the human once we realize oh shit it's a work like I and and Lambert's not going to come out on an interview and be like, yeah, I'm just saying this shit because 
you know, because because Lambert is trying to protect kayfabe in the and old he probably story. does have a lot of spicy views too. You know, a lot of wrestlers Entirely exaggerate awesome. themselves, right? You know, yeah. MJF probably isn't a complete you know ass to everyone, but he is probably pretty similar to his character as is yeah. Moxley, as is Kenny Omega, and the list goes on. Yeah. Um, and you, that is a really good question, and I don't really know if there is an answer to it. The only person who I think could answer it would be Dan Lambert, and essentially, I guess that'd be a good interview question to be like. Like, what is your goal, like, in AEW? What is, like, what do you want to, like, get out of, like, this character? Or, like, out of you being involved in, in AEW? Other than being just this boomer shit heel. Yeah. And I don't think you're going to get an answer out of him until after he's gone from AEW. Yeah. Because he's going to try and protect the character and protect kayfabe as much as possible. Because that's the wrestling fan he is. And maybe he's just, you know, he's just trolling us. Some people just like to be trolls. You know what I mean? Watch him be like the most like progressive left wing human. Oh, being probably, working, right? probably. But you know, you never know because he also works in MMA, and MMA isn't exactly Ooh, the bastion of progressive. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> anyway, uh, no. So, so they're gonna bring out Paige Van Zandt, and it looks like maybe they'll do Paige versus Brandy. What do you think? Like, I see you dancing. Are you happy about it? I love Paige Van Zandt. I mean, she's she's a badass. Um, I mean, she. <laughs> She's been in bare knuckle boxing and she's been in Bellator. She's been in UFC. The the girl can fight, like yeah. like actually fight. Um, so I think that brings a unique edge. Um, I kind of see a little bit of Charlotte Flair in her actually in terms of like her wrestling style. So I think that might be the kind of um, like very heel 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 Charlotte Flair, but uh, but um, oh my god, what's her name? I just forgot her name. Page Page's own, own brand of it. Yeah. Um, so I'm very excited to see her. Um, she's always posting the best thirst traps on Instagram and makes a lot of money on OnlyFans. And yep. if she does the same thing in AEW, she could probably have a career there, like a longer, like a longer term career, because the women's division right now in AEW, um, they have a lot of stars and mid card, but they don't have these kind of like enhancement talent signings. So I think that would be really interesting. There is a lot of money and opportunity for her. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Wrestling, if done right, there's a longevity there, especially after bare knuckle fighting, MMA, everything she's done. And you mentioned her OnlyFans. Like, yes, she is absolutely a beautiful woman. And she is absolutely getting a lot of exposure and a lot of money from, from that side of her work. Yeah, I think wrestling fans would absolutely flock to her OnlyFans if given an opportunity to, to, uh, to understand that she has one. And I'm sure they do. But if you build her up, then she'll continue to make a lot of money off of that. And I and if, and I, if I was her, if I was her, I'd be like, well, I can, you know, get horrible brain injuries and go back to a Bellator or some bare knuckle like mud show garbage yeah. and, you know, have a very short future. Or I can, you know, take cheesecake, great like lingerie esque photos, like not even, not even like yeah. anything like crazy, make a, a lot of money there, use that audience, leverage that audience to, you know, be a wrestling star. I think that that's really smart. And I think that it's a lot more safe for her career, her money and her body. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, Hey, listen, I think we're on the same page. I don't know if I'm excited to see Brandy versus. Oh God, no. I, I love Brandy. I think that I, and we talked about this a little bit before we like uh, went on air, like Brandy belongs on TV. She's beautiful. She's quick. She's, she's hilarious actually. Like, I don't know if you've endured uh, Rose to the top, but I tried an episode and uh, she, you know, she's quick. She, I could see her doing more, hosting or commentating or backstage stuff but yeah baby girl you do not belong in a ring and it's not because she's not strong or a badass it's just like some people just don't have that like je ne sais quoi of what it takes you know what i mean and i totally. i personally don't see it and i yeah. love the girl i really do my my problem with her continues to be a lack of self-awareness but i think that's mm. a that, that's a her thing to work on. That's her and, and Cody. That's a, that's a life thing. And it's not something that you and I have to comment on because yeah, we don't exactly. see their everyday life. Therefore, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. That's just the way that we interpret That's a brandy them. problem. That's a brandy problem. That's the yeah. way that we interpret them when we see them on TV. Um, but regardless, the match between the two, yeah, we're probably going to see some sort of shit show. Or, or Jade a, and Brandy. Ugh. Yeah, make it a tag match. Make it, make it a tag match where Brandy looks the worst of the four. And that's not to say like, 
sandbag Brandy and make her look bad. But I'm saying like in in a in four women in a match, Brandy would be the lowest um, qualifier for a wrestler. Well, that's why it's so weird, right? It's like okay, so we have Brandy back in the women's division, but even let's say for whatever reason she got a belt, then what? Like what? Like what would right. be the what? What are the angles? What are the dynamics with the rest of the women? I just don't understand. Well, you see, then Cody would come back and win the TNT title, mm. and then Brandy would win the TBS title, and then together they would reign the Warner Media networks, and that's how we get to Roads to the Top season two. Oh my god! <laughs> Sorry, I went to the wrong show with that one. Let's talk about Nyla Rose and Ruby Soho. Yes, that's that's much better actually. I love. First of all, I love both of them. Yeah. Um, it was really cool to see Lars Fredrickson. I don't know if if like you're into punk music. Hell yeah, but, uh, yeah. Dude, that was awesome. We were talking yeah. about it on our other podcast. Like the right guy from Rancid was at the show. That's all. That yes. Matters. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I actually I partied with them and uh, Anti Flag a few years ago, and it got pretty spicy. Dude, nice. Yeah, that's the good shit. Yeah. One day, one day yeah. you'll you'll dish. One day. Not yeah. Today. <laughs> no not today no we'll In talk private. about that there In you private. go <laughs> we'll bring it we'll bring it to like the membership tier <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly to get the story six dollars uh, and 66 cents folks yes aim for the moon 66 dollars and 60 cents that sounds good but yeah, yes good, nyla good and ruby um i have a a mini rant it's not even a rant it's just an observation i think that you know nyla gets a lot of hate period for obvious reasons and not so obvious reasons and one thing that i see a lot of people say about her uh, like over and over and over again on comments and posts is that she's not a safe worker and she injures everyone and i think that that's like the total opposite of nyla rose i think she's yeah. one of the most safe workers and she's actually been in situations where other women get hurt and she gets them out of there like really quickly and she's very professional so uh, I, I never understood that like rant about her ever. And um, even in this match, it was pretty smooth. It was very quick. It was very like, um, like fast paced. And that, that last power bomb, like she, she's so gentle with the way she yeah, does it. I'm like, is. I want to get power bombed by Nyla Rose, like immediately, <laughs> immediately. Dude, it's true though. I, so I, I've seen, I haven't seen it as much. Maybe, maybe you've seen it more than I have for people criticizing Nyla for her work style. A lot of people for me had started with, you know, oh, she's um, she's sloppy and she's this and she's like, she's not good at her job. But no, she's gotten a lot better. She didn't come in polished and amazing. No, no, but the that's good not news her is, style. Yeah. And the good news is when you get the reps in and you have the right people teaching you, suddenly you can become a very good performer. And in Nyla's case, that's happened. There was a time when she started that I was like, nah, this ain't doing it for me. But mm -hmm. now... Now I look at her work and I'm just like, cool, someone and her have put in the work. She is clearly working and learning and doing and putting the pieces together to become a better wrestler. And I saw that with the with the Ruby Soho match and who else to have a match like that with than Ruby Soho, who is a great wrestler herself, at least has those those pieces to put together. And the two of them, they had good chemistry. That, that's you can all it was. You can tell that whatever conversations they had before the match, like they they just click. You know what I mean? They really work yeah. well together. Um, their styles are like actually a lot different, but they somehow uh, work together really well. And even though like you can see them like, you know, telegraphing spots on the top rope, um, you can tell that they just really like each other and they're like having yeah. the time of their lives. And even if, you know, you're wrestling and the match is kind of like crappy, if the two wrestlers involved are really selling it and really having a good time, the crowd eats it up. And, yeah, yeah. and that's not saying that that match was like crappy. It wasn't, I don't think it was like a five-star like bangaroo, but, um, no, but it was, it, got, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, it, and it, it went, it, it went long enough and yes. it didn't, and, uh, it was good. And it was it a very believable finish. Yeah. Really believable yes. finish too. Yes. Once again, not a botch. <laughs> People, people were going all on that. We don't need to go into it every, every time, but like we don't need um, to be uh, all about semantics. No, we don't. Uh, we're talking about like different styles working well together, meshing together. Um, when we talk about GCW, remind me because we're going to talk about Ali Catch and AJ Gray. And I did not like that match, which was bad. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Bad. 
Okay, so we'll both we'll, we'll probably have similar views on that. And that is a story of of two friends who are in the same the same group with with Second Gear crew, um, but clearly just. Something didn't work there. We'll we'll talk about that soon. But that's sometimes that's it's when... not good to work with your friends, honestly. Right. Like... Yeah, and we'll get to that uh, in a sec. But um, yep. talking about non friends, CM Punk and MJF. Oh boy, what a match! 50, um, Forty minutes, first of all. Which, like, I I'll probably get like crapped on for saying this. I thought it went a little too long, especially near the end, especially because you did like a timekeeping bit um yeah I but it, it was but it was but it was it was a great match um i i thought it was like quite predictable that mjf was going over but like punk has to lose at some point he has to take an l at some point i thought it was very good storytelling i thought um the real winner for so many reasons was mjf and not just because he took the w but because punk's putting him over and he's been a fan of punk for years um and this also sets up a lot of interesting things for Punk uh, in the future. Sets up interesting things for Wardlow. Sets up interesting things for a lot of other people. Yeah. Um, and the match itself was pretty ferocious. They were um, there was a lot of moments where I turned to uh, Biz, my uh, soon-to-be husband, and was like, "Are they shooting on each other?" Like, and he was like, "I don't know." <laughs> they they went hard. They did. I think they. I, I don't think they were shooting as much as they were just like work snug and you know, we'll apologize later. I think the two of yeah. them probably get along a lot better than we think. Um, yeah. To work a program like that, where you get a little personal, that takes a lot of trust in your, your scene partner, your, you know, the person that you're working with. Um, I kind of agree with you that the match was long. I think there were certain spots where I'm like, okay, we're getting, we're getting a little cute, but I also understood what they were trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, Punk's matches have progressively gotten longer over time or at least as serious matches have yeah and for that i appreciated that that they did this because it kind of proves once again that cm punk his cardio go. is amazing too exactly yeah. like and it and that's what we were kind of establishing while getting mjf over did the the false finish with the the choke out did that make you think when they restarted it that punk was going to win the match or did you double down no. and you were like no no, no, no. I, 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 if I could have bet money on MJF winning, I would have hundred percent. Uh, okay. Um, I, I liked the fake out. I just thought like from the fake out to the actual finish, there was a little bit of lag, but then I kind of went into, um, my like old event production brain and was like, when you're doing a match like that, it's not just like, um, like a two on two or like a four on four, like there's spots, there's props, you're going into the crowd, like, there's a timekeeping bit like there's a lot of moving parts going on so yeah. i was like okay lily like you're being a little too um like nitpicky okay that's fair i mean i had the same the same view with mjf was he was gonna win he doubled down and they now he can yeah. say i beat you i twice. like the fake out i like the fake out a lot yeah. so it got me for a minute because i was like oh yeah. are we like are we gonna have to do this match again because of the the cheat to win or he still cheated to win. I mean, Wardlow did the sleight of hand, which by the way, I have to give the production team full props because they didn't get it until they had to throw it to the replay. And when they yeah. got the replay and then the announcer said, Oh my God, this is what happened. I think that was masterful. That was the best way you can tell that story in my opinion. And I've actually noticed, I don't know. Um, it'd be interesting to like go into like the credits or something of their production stuff, but it seems like there's been a shift in camera operators Perhaps. Um, in the past, uh, let's say three or four weeks. Um, and it's been a lot better. Um, so, so you're recognizing that perfectly because there has been a shift. Their producer, uh, Keith Mitchell, he used to work for WCW way oh. back in the day. And then he was brought in to work for AEW right from the get go. And the last show they had in Texas, that was his last show. So that was about a month ago. So you're right. Like in the last four weeks, the production has changed. The way that they're shooting, the way that they're putting together the show, the, the format's yeah. changed. And it looks a lot better. Yeah. I agree with you. It looks less 90s WCW, which mm, comes and goes. It's fine. It's but very flat. It's very flat. Yeah, it is. And or now they've done be. a lot more. Yeah, I feel mm -hmm. like they've done a lot more with production. I, and I like oh. that you pointed that out because... I didn't expect you to say it, <laughs> but I think it's great. <laughs> but you all my dogs trying to say hi. Out. Should I bring the dog on? I'm sure they want the dog. Dog's good content. The dog is the, the dog is the play. Oh no, memento. All right. 
I will filibust while she's getting doggo out. The chat is obviously okay, saying doggo okay, doggo. Okay. Hey, leave us a thumbs up for the dog, by the way. That's what you got to do. Look at you. He's all wet from outside. Oh, uh, look at him. He's Cooper, he's so you're on Fightful. Okay, you're gross. You're gross. Get out of here. <laughs> Go. Uh, leave a thumbs up for Cooper, would you? <laughs> Put C's in the chat for Cooper. Oh, look at him. All right. Okay, bye. I'm going to stop fawning for dogs. <laughs> he's Let's... a rescue from Texas. He's a... Uh, oh, he's perfect. A yeah. So he, he, he is the murder hawk. He's going to be pulling first for Lance Archer next week for the death match. Who I also could totally see being a new champion this year. This year, yes. Next, yeah. th this coming Wednesday, I probably not. No, 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 no. Be one hell of a but shot. Could you imagine with three weeks left until the pay-per-view, Lance Archer wins a championship and has a potential main event match at Revolution? That'd be very WWE of them, but it also would be kind of cool. I think it'd be a weird bait and switch. Or not a bait and switch. I think it'd be a cool switch because there are no real matches at Revolution yet. Yeah, true. You don't, very, very it, true. it doesn't have to be a main event. It could be an undercard it, match. Yeah. Probably not, though. Let's move on. Uh, speaking of main events, Adam Cole, Bebe, and our favorite, Evil Uno. You want to hear something funny about Adam Cole, Bebe? Actually, when I was coming uh, when I was coming back to shoot this episode, I was on the TTC for my Torontonians. It's hell. It's our public transit. Um, and I, I had my gym playlist on. And for whatever reason, I must have been stoned last week and mm -hmm. added Adam Cole's theme song <laughs> to my gym playlist. So I'm walking uh up the uh bathurst platform and the theme comes on so i just had had my little moment and i was having i was pretending that i was having my wrestling entrance moment it was great and as the train pulls up you just went the wind boom. yeah i had the wind yeah boom right <laughs> no i didn't have good timing oh that's fine you'll you, the more you listen to it the more you get it it's like a video of Britt baker doing it before she it was like, so cute it was so, so cute. cute she's like i got I it i got it on the first time <laughs> it was really good i like yeah, that they're a very sweet couple and i actually saw um uh i think it was brody king just posted his kid that just turned three and it was like the sweetest photos i've ever seen in my life it was like him eating spaghetti and it was like all over him that's so sweet i love it yeah i got I just go to picture to picture uh brody king as a dad is just hilarious too because yeah, his ki okay. kid of the kids of the Black Throne. That's yeah, exactly. Uh, so okay, Uno loses the match. No, no shock there. Poor Uno. What? What? What, what did you think that Evil Uno would win that match and dominate the AEW roster until he gets a title shot? What are we doing? Of course, of oh, course. Okay, sure. You gotta, you gotta root for our Canadian boys. Come on, Joel. I know, especially because uh, Stu Grayson's from Ottawa, my hometown. So he and I oh. bonded over that. Yeah, nice. he. Uh, Oh no, he, he just I got he a figure to... too. He just got a, a figure. Did he? Oh, I'm pretty sure. I will have to take a look. I yeah. know that John Silver, he just did. He, I know that, but I know they just did a new Brody with the old TNT belt, and I'm pretty sure Stu Grayson, but I might be, I might be incorrect. Hey, whatever. Maybe they'll tell us in the comments. Who knows? Uh, yeah, hey, leave so... us comments, please. Yeah, the comments, like them. The thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. If you haven't, I don't know what you're talking about because we drop stuff every day. Literally, We're very so professional. Basically super as we drink our drinks uh cole wants to be taken seriously now and i sat there and i was like wait we weren't taking you seriously before but i like the promo i just didn't think he needed to be like i'm serious adam cole because i've always taken you seriously adam cole well it's funny and i think that we've discussed this before is that adam cole's like an interesting character because he kind of is like a tweener where he's kind of a heel he's kind of a baby face but even as a heel, he kind of is like very goofy. So even when he's trying to be taken seriously in the ring with his promos, which are fantastic, by the way, yeah, it's yeah, kind of hard. Are. It's kind of hard to necessarily take him seriously because he has such a like specific style of being a heel. That's kind of, you know, his Florida man, Adam Bebe thing. You know what I mean? Which I love. Yeah. Yes. But it's just like pure Florida man heel, which is like its own thing. Yeah. And he just, he's, I don't know what he wants to be taken seriously for or what's going to make him exactly. taken seriously. Like exactly. when we already kind of did, maybe it's because he just had a full on feud with, with Orange Cassidy and the best friends that he's like, now, now you take me seriously because he lost. So now he's just, I don't know. I don't know really what he wanted out of that promo. I get it, but I also don't. So that's kind of where I came 
know, it was a strange me. booking to be honest with you like i was like oh okay it was one of those we need to get adam on the show and we yeah. didn't put him on, on or Dynamite maybe someone got covid or something it's possible for some yeah. reason someone gets pulled but uh hey whatever tnt title match though that was pretty all right had uh, isaiah cassidy versus sammy guevara a lot of news came out of that match instead of the match itself so uh where do you want to start do you want to start with forbidden door talk sorry i make fun of it now or do you want to talk about the match um, let's start with Forbidden Door because I'm like so like well about that as well. <laughs> it's either gonna be a huge moment or a huge letdown. And whenever Tony tweets, it often becomes a little bit of a letdown because there's a lot of hyperbole going on. Do you have a name in mind that you want to see show up on Wednesday night? I mean, I just I just want someone from New Japan. I think the odds are it would be from New Japan or potentially from Impact. But there's no specific name um, because New Japan just did like just re-signed everyone that I thought would come over. Um, Juice. Keith Lee. I don't know. I mean, Juice Robinson's a free agent. That's another thing, too. A lot of people will get on Tony's ass if it's a free agent that just signed and not someone who's like signed to another promotion or is like about to finish with another promotion. So Juice just finished a week ago on the 31st of, of January. Uh, Tamatanga announced that he is a free agent as of now. Uh, I doubt that it's going to be Tamatanga because I need both guys to show up if they're going to do a if they're going to do anything. I've, I've been avoiding speculation because, like you said, it's just always a letdown. But that'd yeah. be hilarious. That would be hilarious if, for whatever reason, if it was Minoru. Oh, dude! I, I, the two people that I think would be hilarious. One is Biff Busick, aka the former Oni Lorkin from WWE. He's the right guy to come in and lose a match to Isaiah Cassidy, who just had a great match and was her- Maybe it's heralded McMahon. for it. Shane McMahon was another one that I laughed at, but no, my favorite one, and I said this on another show, so uh, apologies if you haven't uh, or if you have heard this. So the so Isaiah's in the ring, lights go down, crowd is cheering, they're excited, who could it be? Oh my god. <sighs> Wrestling has more than one royal family. And out comes Cody Rhodes, and he's got Tony Khan, free agent Cody Rhodes. And he cut, he's he got Tony Khan with them. They're linking arm in arm, and like they raise each other's hand because Cody's resigned. And then Tony bends his back over, and Cody takes his the, the AEW, uh, you know, <laughs> binder. And then a dragon comes down. <laughs> exactly there's a big big dragon it's a whole thing and he opens up the binder and he signs his name cody rhodes and cody rhodes is re-signed with aw and then he wins the match and isaiah cassidy is not part of the face of the revolution ladder match we joked about that as well like that would be hilarious if cody just came out with like the most over the top ridiculous like, pyro pyro to shit entrance ever um and this is how they announce Rhodes to the top season two. Oh no <laughs> or the big show the big or the show go or big show they're like, like oh, stop showing show. me, stop showing me clips of that poor guy with the Rubik's cube on fire. Like, my oh goodness. yeah, that's right. Or the guy getting getting smashed in the dick. <laughs> well, well, that's another actually interesting thing about watching AEW as a Canadian, as our is our streaming options are quite limited, and we're almost forced to pirate um, or watch like illegal streams, right. um, allegedly. Allegedly, um, none of allegedly. us are doing it. No, 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 no. allegedly, it. like other people, other fans, not us. Um, but yeah, I uh, those other fans usually see American ads. Yeah, and those American ads are horrifying. <laughs> they are. You know, it was horrifying though watching TK. Sorry, not TK. TR Thunder Rosa get piped by Mercedes Martinez. That was a great spot. I was like, wasn't oh it? My God, dude, I love that match. I, people yeah. who know me know that I love Mercedes Martinez. I've been waiting I, for her for so long, dude. When she was released. I said immediately, I never do the uh, so-and-so should go to AEW gimmick. I never do that. Her and Samoa Joe were the only people mm. when they were really, when, when Joe was released the first time I said, either he goes to AEW and becomes a coach and wrestles, or he goes to impact and reclaims his throne and then goes to AEW. Like there was something there, but Mercedes Martinez immediately. I wanted her at AEW to be a player coach. And she is. You see her uh, work and you just instantly are hooked. And I, I forget uh, which commentator said it, but I think that she's held something like six to 15 belts in her in her career. So it's uh, it's an honor to even get to work with her. Um, and I think that she's going to just breathe um, a new type of air into the women's division in AEW. And when you have someone like that who has that type of experience, 
um, it forces people to work harder too, that are not just on their level. Like it forces people that are jobbers that are kind of green to work harder. Yeah. And it works. It worked for yeah. me to watch that match and to watch Thunder Rosa. It was satisfying as heck, man. Yeah. Yeah. So I really, I really enjoyed the match. I really enjoyed that they had uh, the post match stuff going on. There's oh, actually it was so great. Line. She's like, I told you to beat her. <laughs> Yeah, and, and yeah. I bought you. I brought you in. I signed the check. The, the, everything flows through Britt Baker. Yeah, and, and Rebel. Want, and Rebel. And, and Jamie Hayter now. I well, that's that's something interesting. It's going to be Mercedes and Hayter being and set I'm up, which so is going to be exciting. <laughs> that's a match that I am waiting to see because, oh, yeah. again, player coach Jamie Hayter is young, and she's still real good, but she, she can learn a lot from Mercedes Martinez and vice versa. That match is going to be freaking good oh yeah and if you haven't seen jamie Hayter's work in stardom like you need to go watch that stuff immediately oh good point i need to catch yeah. up on some stardom I'll, mm -hmm. I'll i'll hit up our friend uh kate who does uh here's why you're wrong with me big 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 joshi wrestling fan our friend kate sweet <laughs> let's talk uh you want to talk about that that ftw title match with ricky starks or you want to move on to gcw yeah i always got time for ricky starks baby Hell yeah, let's talk about it. It's a good match. The finish is really what I what I remember most going into that lethal injection and hitting a Rochambeau, just picking him up and whoosh, over and out. Love I thought it. that I thought it was gonna go the other way. I thought that, that really? because they showed a new graphic behind him with the FTW belt, and I was like, why are they showing that? Is he about to drop the belt? Holy crap. But no, no, it's time. It's time to start yeah. using that belt and start. Well, they need to do something it with it. Like you can't just like you know, come out and do your like Ricky Starks thing every week as much as I love that. And I love him and I love New Orleans. So I would never insult him. But uh, and I love Taz and I love Hobbs. Um, but yeah, Hulk? they need what to do Hulk? something. Oh, right. Well, he's new. I forgot. I forgot. But you got to love Hook because that FTW title is, is for him. Well, the reason I love Hook is actually so funny. It's because uh, his entrance song is uh, by this rapper I love. And I think that's just so cool to hear like kind of like a under semi underground rapper um on network tv is action bronson really underground though i said semi underground is he though come on he's me well i guess now that he has like his brain. food his food thing is going on he's not very yeah. underground. but i want i want action bronson to get involved with AEW in some capacity too because now he's working out like crazy he's doing strongman style training and he's obsessed with old wrestling he's always refer referencing wrestling in his uh his tracks so that's true well hey man AEW is going to start heading west soon so you could see them show up. They're going to start Just doing... come to uh, Canada. Holy. Uh, well, our borders need to open up first. But who knows? Maybe the summertime we'll get lucky. I would love to see AEW in Canada. I've seen them once before in New York. Let's go bring them into Toronto. Why I'm not? I, I may be um, going to Detroit for a GCW show, actually. So that will be interesting. Let's go. Which, yeah, come. I mean, maybe. We'll see where we're at. We'll it's see not till April. Like. So it has enough time for us to see what's going on with the borders and this and that. See if my wife wants to let me go with a month old baby in her arms. <laughs> bring a pregnant, bring a pregnant woman to GCW. That seems like a She'll, very safe environment. She will have hopefully already given birth by then. But oh, right, okay. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what's going home. on at home. Yeah, exactly. Listen, I'm sure people are just going to be like, if your wife really loves you, she'll let you go to wrestling. <laughs> Actually, and we'll get into GCW. But um, yes, there were some kids in the crowd. I was like, wow, coolest moms or dads ever. Let's just get into GCW because there's nothing else Let's. from that that FTW title match. It was fine, but like yeah, it was fine. Day, it was great. It was, but the finish yeah. was it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I didn't watch the 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 first night. I missed the first night. Me too, was actually. There... Oh, okay. So we can talk about the the second night. We can talk about the 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 main show. I use that kind of half heartedly. Uh, Wait, this okay. is this is something. Okay, before okay. we start, GCW, yes. I love you. But the way that they advertise break up their shows is so confusing because I have fight, right? And that's where you can like get all the shows. But it's so bloody confusing sometimes when they split it up into two nights. So I'm always like chatting with people online as shows go on. And I know that there was another match with Effie and Nash, I believe. And I didn't see that night. But I did see the other night with um, Psycho Clown, Janela, et cetera, et cetera. You're right. There was a match. The Effie did have a match the night before, and that was, I didn't see it. <laughs> and I was also thinking about what, when they got to the main event, with which was Janela and, and Dr. Wagner Jr., I was like, wait a minute. 
what did I, didn't I miss something? Cause I remember hearing the results and reading the results and being like, isn't there something else? But no, that they were on night one. And I, so. oh, and that happens to be so often. So I don't like, I don't know if it's me being an idiot or if it's just like a way that they format their like PPVs in like a, a, a strange way. I don't know. Um, but there was a lot weekend. of part it. I, I think they're trying to do like weekend shows, but show number one is like the, not the, it's like the, the B show. And then the Sunday night is the A show. Like they, they very clearly have a distinction of which show is which okay. in terms of popularity, but maybe, maybe not again, maybe the, they're screaming at us in the comments being like, no, you're wrong. GCW gets it right. Every Scream time. at us. Correct us. Sure. Like yeah. I've only I mean, been watching it for like two years. So I don't know. <laughs> shit i enjoyed the hell out of that the show though on sunday that's oh, yeah uh, yeah that that show was full of blood full of doors full of weird spots uh let's start so there was the opening tag match with nick wayne and he's incredible and he's so young like so yeah. young who the who was he tagging with because now i forget me um, as well. Taking, um, I mean, Nick Nick Wayne was the standout. I actually, you could probably open up open it up on Cage Match really quick. But yeah. um, I know. Thing, uh, sorry, I, I know Ninja Mac and Dante Leon got the win. I know that. Oh yeah, I yeah. mean Ninja. I feel so bad for Ninja Mac because he had a DDT uh, signing deal that didn't go through, and I feel that him on AEW would actually be quite interesting. Because imagine Ninja Mac tagging with Fuego. Oh, that'd that be would, fun. Yeah. I think I need to see that now. Holy crap. I'm going to try, I'm trying um, to bring up who won in that match. Keep just talking. Give us a moment. No, but um, GCW is usually a mess, especially with scrambles and tags. Um, yes. But this event in particular was very clean, not in an organizing way, not in an audio way, not in a production way. Um, but each match was like super entertaining. There was uh, like no, no time that I wanted to fast forward at all. Um, especially with some of like the really hardcore deathmatch stuff. I usually fast forward through that um, as well as some of these like more messy scrambles, but uh, each, each match was so well balanced. The uh, timekeeping was really, really, really good. And uh, the spots were insane. And what was also so bizarre about it was the venue itself. It was yeah. in this, like, I guess like a football training slash CrossFit gym. So you had like the ring in the middle, but there was also like a second floor. So um on the psycho clown match especially they utilized oh, we'll that a get lot to that. yeah and we'll it was that. bonkers bonkers and on my twitter I actually posted a couple of videos from uh, this videographer that was there and he got some like wild shots so uh follow him as well i forget his name but uh, i tagged him <laughs> uh, uh jordan oliver whom i yes. met a handful of times and now i feel like an idiot jordan oliver young dumb and broke there you go uh so again yeah good match good opening contest just cutters into cutters which is love hilarious. a good cutter absolutely like ninja mac doing a shooting star press that nick wayne counters into a cutter hilarious dante leon gets a cutter of his own and then eventually ninja mac gets the pin by doing his flippy flippy whatever the hell he's calling it but it's good i don't even think he has names for his moves it's like it's, it's a ninja mac and i Tom love the Terry commentator he doesn't <laughs> they, no. they don't know what it is either All i right. mean this is nicotine but god knows what they're smoking when they're exactly. you know, yeah uh a lot of doors for john wayne murdoch versus uh asf I saw a hilarious tweet um, that got sent out after the event from uh, Lauderdale. He said, you guys cost me $560 yes. in rental chairs. And if anyone's ever thrown an event, that's a lot because a rental chair per day usually is like $2. Dude, they went nuts on the chairs. They oh, did. yeah. Like, yeah. They, they didn't give notes. any any shits about that. Yeah. So they just kind of went out like DVDs on the chair. There was a lot of headshots. I don't like headshots with chairs. I don't like no. headshots in general. If no. you're going to do it, God, get your hands up. I saw well, when, I saw a few people get their hands up, like Gringo Loco, but then I also saw Gringo Loco take a, hair, a chair to the head, flush, and I'm like, "Come on!" Like, what well, are that's doing? what I've noticed is like in the past, like 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 since COVID started, now chair like hands up chair shots are back, and I'm like, "Bro, like stop! Please don't do this! Please don't do this!" Yeah, they got to I'm not a big fan of, of chair shots to the head. Get, no, get the elbow, no, 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 no. I I will take a chair shot to the back any day, but like I would never do anything on my head. Ever. Yeah, don't take it to legs the back i don't care but never to the head i enjoyed asf getting you know the shit beat out of him by a big man and also getting a bit of fight back too using the little guy moves uh on the big man on on uh john wayne murdoch the, it was a fun match i mean I, oh no I it, it says my computer's dying that's not good oh that's fine let it die slowly painfully as long as your camera keeps going <laughs> uh murdoch with an avalanche brain buster through the door and he wins there we go 
But he gives ASF props on the way out. I like that. Yeah, there's some there's some good camaraderie in GCW considering it's like, you know, GCW. <laughs> so, Ali Catch and AJ Gray. We both agree that wasn't it. It was not it. And I think that, like we said, sometimes it's not good to uh, work with your friends. And this was one of those situations where it was just so sloppy from start to finish. They yeah. didn't connect. They didn't know essentially what the heck was going on. Like they just kept dropping each other. They were like telegraphing horribly. Um, and I actually will blame this more so on him than Ali because she was like really trying to like, you know, turn to the camera and, you know, clean things up. But there was just no hope. There was no hope. Punches and forearms don't look good from no. them. Which I, and I, sorry, but I am going to try and plug this in, but we can keep talking because I do not. Fine. And like you're like everything I everything you're saying I agree with. And this isn't us shitting on either competitor because they're really good a lot of the time. Like they know how to work, but uh, you know, just the match itself, they they spent it trying not to hurt each other in a in a fight where you're supposed to be trying to hurt each other. It looked like two fight. drunk people outside of a bar that I would have been like, Hey guys, okay. guys, guys, like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it would just yeah. it just wasn't it wasn't compelling wrestling. It wasn't compelling storytelling. And it was just, you know, and like you're a musician, you know, sometimes you perform some nights they're bad. Sometimes they're, it's good. It's yeah. just... e- even like doing this stuff, like even podcasting, oh, yeah, it's yeah, the same yeah. thing. I've had bad podcasts. I've been feeling like shit afterwards. And then you turn around and you have a great one the next day or two days later. Exactly. So gray wins with the top rope brain buster, because that's the theme of the night. <laughs> and, Apparently. Uh, there you go. Now, Jimmy Lloyd and speedball that that was fun i felt bad for jimmy lloyd because he got hurt so in the middle of the match yeah he still made it to the end they want to do it again they want to run it back but man how good is speedball mike bailey he's like it, like i just go like this i just go how like how can the right? human body do that this fast and he like no sells everything like it's so weird how he'll get ricocheted into like the most brutal cutter or like brutal finisher ever and he'll just get up and be like let's go yeah let's go bro yeah uh lloyd does the the middle rope dive and speedball reverses it by doing a springboard moonsault and hits the chairs with jimmy lloyd and i thought that was nuts just the timing the way that they set it up like i was really into it i really enjoyed the match speedball it was a really good event like there was not one match where i was like "Mm, this is boring i want to fast forward through it and that was definitely one of the standouts but for me my favorite match i think was probably psycho clown yes holy shit so uh th- that's the next match and all i say about it is like here comes the blood because they absolutely went ham and one thing i don't like with gcw is that they don't put soundboard audio on the fight feed Oof. so i can't hear the microphone like very well i had to pump up the, the sound and hope that it's catching through the speaker whatever it is so gringo loco and psycho clown both have promos after or before and after and i'm like struggling to hear and i caught nothing and even in the the, we'll get to the very end of the show with psycho clown and dr wagner jr same thing where it was like trying to figure out what they're saying thankfully commentary covered it but the match itself holy shit i i almost didn't sit down like i was just like having a party on my couch watching (laughs) it it wasn't like even one individual spot or or maneuver that impressed me it was the fact that these two men just kept going and they actually used the entire venue, not just the ring. Yeah. There were two moments where they took dives, like splashes from, I'm guessing, at least 15 feet in the air. So to picture a body that weighs, you know, well over 200 pounds coming down at you from over 15 feet in the air, that's that's a lot to deal with. That's a and lot to a, deal with. And through a door. <laughs> That's like bevved up on chairs. It was nuts. Were there light like, tubes? I didn't know. There weren't they, many light they, tubes. Yeah, there was at the, oh, towards yeah. the end. We'll get to that. So they do. I I didn't need Psycho Clown going and doing his own splash from the top. I really feel like they should have just. One was enough. Yeah, dragged it back to the ring. Because if you're going to hit a, uh, well, it was something from the top of that. Um, the doors on the chairs through the from the goal post. Mm. If you, like that should have been the finish or at least close to the finish because like that's that's the high spot that's the move and then yeah. they kind of they went and they kept going for some reason psycho clown almost doesn't sell it and does something from the top of the stairs it looks like he smacks his head coming down but he doesn't i guess Just I, looked bad. my it neck looked bad. hurt watching that match it yeah. was it was brutal somehow they found a steel chair in the middle of this match 
and they started using that instead of the plastic ones. That's when I was like, stop doing the headshots, please. Um, and they do a light tube spot. So at one point, Gringo was like pulling light, light tube glass yeah. out of his head. And I'm like, oh, I can't watch this. But they got to the finish. Clown wins, gets a rematch. He does a Spanish fly off top rope. That was the one of and my like, favorite moves ever. It, it's pretty, especially when it's done right. And, yeah. and Psycho Clown does it right. And they both made it look good. So Psycho Clown's like, hey, I want to do this again. And that's cool. I'm fine with that. But uh, and just a bloody match, man. Goes on. Yeah, I mean, if you're not into like more hardcore bloody matches, and that definitely wasn't for you. But I mean, even from a technical standpoint, they pulled off some pretty crazy spots. Yeah, uh, that the four way fuck fest. I, I that was the match that I fast forwarded through. Yeah, I, it was. I like Atticus, I like Atticus Kogar. I like that he gets the win. But other than that, I just didn't care for much else. I like the Grim Reefer storyline in this match. He was smoking a cigarette too. I was like, is that a cigarette or a joint? Oh, I'm so he's confused. Smoking, it's a joint. It's always a joint. He's the grim. But it looked like a cigarette. He rolls it very like a like a cigarette. Very tight, very tight yeah. and like uh, tubular. Yes. So Reefer at one point puts out the cigarette in Koger's face after Koger had already taken and put out one of Grim Reefer's spliffs. And I like that. That's silly little storytelling like that in a match is fine. But like the rest of the match, I'm like, cool, whatever. Kogar steals the win. Zane looks good. They're going to do Zane versus Kogar next, which is cool. But other than that, like the match didn't do much for me. Me neither. And Kogar just reminds me of so many um, like Oshawa Hamilton, like band dudes that like yep. gave me the hanks growing up. And I bet you he's like the most lovely guy in real life, but there's just something about him that bothers me. And, and uh, I just wasn't feeling that match either, but I mean, I, I bet you it's the know. suspenders. It probably is a suspenders. Yeah. Those, those would give it's me a dog whistle. Cubes. It's a dog yeah, whistle, so yeah. All right. We don't have to talk about Blake Christian Lurid. Okay, it's a good match. Go go watch it. Fun match, flippy match. Uh, let's get to the main event. Janela, Dr. Oh, yes. Wagner Jr. Holy the shit. return. The return. Go for it. Tell me, what did you like? What did you not like? Give me the rundown. Well, si similar to Atticus, Joey Janela reminds me of the guys that I did like growing up, that I partied with, that, you know, gave me my first beer, that, you know, he, we're just kind of weird stoner bros that you know kind of showed me cool music and showed me skate videos and punk stuff and, um <laughs> yeah i just i just like him and his persona um and he just reminds me of like so many dudes i know um and it's pretty legendary to get that match True. um and he looks incredible wagner like wagner does yeah absolutely incredible i was like damn like you look like a snack did not you, to be rude but wow no, it was like it's a fine. snack did you see him get unmasked back in like i think it was 27 yes you yes, yes. Did see it. okay yeah cool. yeah yeah and everyone was like oh my gosh i didn't realize yes. how good looking he was yeah yeah good. keeping up the uh the masked wrestlers are the, the best looking wrestlers yeah it's true. of course penta must be very handsome fellow for sure uh anyway i hope he doesn't unmask anytime soon so <laughs> He's fine. No, he's fine. I'm not going to talk shit about him. It's, probably it's, it's the tattoos. Him. It's the tattoos. Yeah, sure. Why not? No, he's fine. Um, I like Wagner tying up Joey Janela in knots. Yes. And trying to get him to submit. I think that was fun. More unprotected shit. Hair, More hair, blood. Uh, like whatever. Joey, Joey like was not, did not look well. Like I, like I like blood. I like, I'm okay with blading, but I don't know what happened. It, I don't know if he bladed or something just hit him. Like the steel just hit him. It went so yeah. deep. And I myself, like, I don't know if you've ever had like a head injury, but I've like accidentally cut myself. Um, and it was just like a tiny nick like here. And it just like would not stop bleeding. Like it was crazy. Yeah. At one point he's just covered. Yeah. It was brutal. Yeah. At uh, the end I was like, go clean yourself up. My God. Like No, red means green, baby. That's how the wrestlers feel, you know. But uh, I Cornette's do like just vomiting somewhere. I mean, like, I can't <laughs> believe this. I like the 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 chair mountain spot to the finish. I think yes. that was ridiculous. Yeah. You set it up, you're going through it. But also, Looney when, Tunes uh, rules are always in effect in wrestling. Oh, if you set up the crazy thing, you are the one that's going to pay for that, not the other that's person. Right. That's the way it goes. I yeah. do like the parting of the sea spot too when uh, Janella does the full sprint from the from the ring out into the crowd through the crowd to the merch table just to take out wagner i like that that was fun that's a gcw tradition i feel like if you go to gcw yes. and you don't do some type of like parting of the red sea of chairs or running across one side of the ring into chairs then you won't be invited back you just won't. yeah so wagner gets the win and 
just he spikes Janela. That's the finish. Not even going through the chairs. It spikes him in his finish, and that's it. And then afterwards, Psycho Clown comes out and starts throwing chairs in the ring and inevitably challenges, or Wagner challenges Clown to a mask versus hair match. So I don't know if you saw the tweets earlier in the night. I did not. Brett Lauderdale, had, who was the owner of GCW, for those who don't know, had said something along the lines of, uh, we understand there was an altercation pre-show between oh, yeah. Dr. Wagner and Psycho Clown. We're sorry that wasn't part of the show. And I'm like, or was it? So then this happens, and clearly whatever happened pre-show was just part of the gimmick, yada, yada. It's a work. It's a work. It's whatever. But you can't go to the well too many times with that, especially one after another, because you just did a whole Nick Gage isn't going to be on Hammerstein. And then what do you do? Nick Gage is part of Hammerstein. You can't really. Yeah, you can't go that far. But either way, Wagner clown in GCW, they're going to have a match. This is what Dr. Wagner Jr. is doing now. Like he's have he's growing out his hair just to have it cut every year in a mask versus hair match. And that's fine. Sure. It's a do really it complicated way of getting a haircut. It, you know what? I need a haircut. I might put my hair on the line in a match. I, I'll just lay down and get pinned and be like, go ahead. get Come on. Just get get it right. So that's what we're looking at for GCW, maybe the collective show. I don't know when they're going to want to do Who it. Who knows? They, they just keep announcing show after show after show. And like I said, I might even be going to one in Detroit, I think, in uh, April um, because it's just easy. It's like right across the border, essentially. So yeah, it's close. I would do it. I want to I experience that. I want to experience GCW before it turns into an episode of Dark Side of the Ring. I, I for some inevitable some some inevitable controversy that will happen probably. Yeah, I mean, listen, if it hasn't come out yet, you're probably in the, you're probably okay for now. Uh, you heard it that, here, folks. You heard it here it. first. I've been to a GCW show. I've enjoyed myself. I would love to go to more. Uh, yeah. When I have the opportunity, I will. And maybe you and I will go because we we keep talking Ooh. about it. We're gonna do. It's gonna it. happen. It's gonna happen. We're gonna do it. All right. I think we should run to the exits. Get out of here. Lily. Sure. Are you ready to go? I'm Bar's ready to closing. go. Last call. Bar's it's closing. Over. I gotta get a snack. Go get your snack. Lily, where can the people find you on the internet? People can find me at Lily Z on Twitter. They can find me um, doing stuff for Fightful and my own website, Strange Comforts, and just doing all kinds of stuff on the internet. There we go. It's Fightful Overbooked. YouTube.com slash Fightful Overbooked or FightfulOverbooked.com. We drop content every day sometimes twice in a day and you can Ooh. follow us all there uh and if you're podcast guys or girls or friends beyond the binary you can find us on all your platforms for podcasting just search fightful overbooked you'll see us there ladies and gentlemen give friends us comments the binary, drop comment drop a like get it in go we'll see you next time